Hello everybody, welcome back to more in Boromat 94 Replay. So last time we started the game, we defeated the monkey boss in the forest world. And now we're starting the volcano, world number two. Actually in here we will be dealing with some in interesting difficulty boost. Especially from the next level on. Of course, le first levels tend to be extremely simple. It's a single room with relatively simple enemies. Well, actually, this... I got an extra life, I guess, by getting 25,000 points, I assume. Uh, yeah. These enemies that have a flamethrower can make your bombs explode. If you remember in the previous Burman game, Burman 93, uh, enemies shot projectiles, but none of those projectiles were able to make the bombs explode at all. But it does happen in this game, so... Well, this, this doesn't really count as a projectile. Basically, an external attack from the enemy. So you have to be twice as careful. So basically, there are elements that make this game easier in a way. The fact of being able to grab a lot of items. I don't want to get more speed. I think the speed I have is just fine. And those items don't turn into coins in the end. Apparently only blocks. I always forget about that, you know, doing that on purpose in order to confirm that theory about the block issue. So yeah, four worlds, sorry, four levels in this world, as I told you, from this world on, every world will have four stages, and also minecarts, which is something we have seen, for example, in Super Boromant series. You can kill enemies and destroy all the blocks on your way, but since I'm pretty much done with this, there's no point in riding the minecart so many times. Just once or twice, like I did. This guy again? He does like some sort of headbutt ability. I'm just trying to compare it with the blue one. I don't even remember what the blue one did. Again, I don't have recollection of how many bombs and firepower items I've been grabbing, but it gives the impression from the looks of it, that I have a lot of power. That's an undeniable fact. The always annoying will enemy is also back in this one. One orb left. I don't really see the point of destroying all the blocks again. I have enough power. I'm still curious about, you know, the existence or the non-existence of the remote bomb. That enemy that I just killed looks like a Goomba. Okay, here's the little difficulty boost I was referring to because the volcano will shoot some, some fireballs to the floor, but those fireballs can make the bombs explode. I think they cannot hurt you as such. They like paralyze you for two or three seconds, which makes you exposed to certain enemies, but it doesn't directly hurt you, but it does make, or they do make the bombs explode, which is something you have to be watch out for. Double kill. That's orb. I told you about that. Uh. Okay, now we are back in the same situation as before. Didn't really see the point of showing everything again since I technically beat the level but I didn't get to grab the stone. I was getting greedy. Yep, as I thought, uh, the blocks turn into coins. They allow you to grab points. 
Yeah, I could have gotten the firepower. I mean, do I need more even? I wouldn't be surprised I already got the maximum amount, so whatever. Stage three. You guys shouldn't be surprised at this point that there will be probably a third room in this level. Actually, I think it's gonna be kind of a common thing to see like the third level of the world tend to be the longest, so it has like three rooms, but the fourth one is a bit shorter, shorter than the previous one, not as long. That's the one I remember, at least. By the way, those little volcanoes don't do anything. They can scare you... and make you think that you are in danger or something, but nah. You don't have to worry. Okay. Large room with a minecart first. Oh, okay, it just has a second room. I mean, let's consider this just the second world. The other three orbs are at the very bottom. Ten five, as you can see, there are like one next to another. Almost. Yeah, the three orbs are pretty much in the same place. Yeah, it would be very tempting to, to take the mine card and go immediately to the end of the level, but... This task goes first. Hey! Time Stopper. Something we didn't see much of in the previous game. Okay, we're done. Just... This one blocks for the hell of it. I haven't even seen the no clips. There we go. Enemy placement. Okay, I will have to go back and grab coins. I mean, not that I have to, but I do want to. I left a lot of... blocks... No, not many, really. I thought I left more. Again, this is for the sake of points only. So now we are going to do the very last level before the boss battle. Actually, the boss battle in this world has something, some curiosity, some something really different from the rest. So yeah, level 4. This could be the longest. Oh my god. That was kind of lucky, but I, I literally say kind of, because... I actually put the bomb there on purpose, because that would make the enemies stop moving. And somehow that's what I plan on doing. That's like, the last resort. Remember, you can kill enemies while riding the minecarts. And we're dealing with the volcano. Hello! Remote bomb. Pretty much found it by accident. Okay, 
Oh, that was ass. Fucking flamethrower. Okay, good thing about this is that, yeah, if you die here, you can recover the same items. It will be probably located on, in different blocks, but yeah, I got the remote bomb back. But you have to know where, in which levels you are supposed to find such items. That was close. Oh my god! There are no invisibility frames after you write it off. That's very weird, to say the least. I mean, definitely in other Boromar games, after you you ride that thing for a few seconds, you have a couple of seconds on invisibility frames, but it's not even the case here. That makes it more, I don't know, realistic? But yeah, very weird, because it's actually a matter of luck if you find the enemy right in front of you when you write it off. The, the, the card. So yeah, not totally fair if you ask me. So in those cases, it's better just to get rid of enemies before even thinking of writing the minecart shit. That was a close one. I'm gonna go this way because the orbs are basically... The only way to access in those orbs is by... Basically, do it in the slow way. Well, I'm not too worried. This is the last... room... of the level. Ideally, I would like to beat the boss before I run out of lives, because as, as I told you, if you run out of lives, you are able to continue from the same level, even if it's the boss battle, but you will have to do the, the battle without... The power-ups you have been collecting. You will have only one bomb on the most basic fire power, or the weakest. Yeah, the two orbs are pretty much right at the exit. So these little fireballs that the volcano throws uh, also are capable of destroying the blocks. Which can be helpful at times. I wanna kill the enemy first. So apparently it goes directly to where the bomb is. It gets attracted by bombs. Not very smart. And plenty of monies. Okay, that's good for lives. I was precisely pointing out that it's a little worrying that I don't have enough lives or I've been losing a couple of lives. How many of those lives were pretty much there's nothing I could do there, because it took me by surprise. So yeah, here's the uh, curious thing about this boss battle. The music for the battle itself is different. <clears throat> Actually, the music is awesome. But it's the only battle that features this music, which is kind of shitty. The other music is cool too, but I like this one better for some reason. By the way, you're fighting a pyramid. And in my opinion, if you compare the music from Sega Genesis version, I like the music for this one better. I mean, the music from the stages themselves change, I believe. In, in some stages, but the boss battles are basically the same tracks. And this one sounds better in here than right on the Sega Genesis music. Look it up as Boromar 94 Boss Stage or Boss Theme 2. That was a relatively short battle. Let's consider that I have full power. So basically the big deal with that guy is that he's able to jump and paralyze you for a couple of seconds and also throw fists. But it's not too bad in the end. So there you go. Two out of five pieces of the world restored to its original place. So I want to thank you for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next episode next week with more Burman 94. See ya!